Brian and Kevin in the lab with you today, and we're taking a look at this. This is OopBeat by Object First, and OopBeat is, uh, what's that thing where each letter is a word and an acronym? An ac Something like that. Yes, it's that, and it means out of the box immutability, and there's a lot of words in there that are important. I guess only one word's important. <laughs> One's really important, and that's immutability. Yes, it means you can't delete it unless you really want to, but it has to allow you. Yeah, it's not just that you really want to, it's that you, you have, have to, to be it, outside of the policy to then be able to delete it, yeah, outside, so, outside of the immutability. Yeah, the you I want part. to delete it at the time that you originally wanted to be able to delete it at. Okay, I have no idea what Kevin's talking about, but fundamentally, immutability means you cannot delete the file, and we learned that the hard way. We'll get into that in a little bit. Oopi is characterized by a couple key components, uh, the simple deploy, the easy to use GUI, the zero trust bit and security and uh, object native, right? I yeah. think those are the most of the key ones. Uh, talk about deployment because that one was really simple. I know you set up a time with one of their engineers to deploy the device as we often do. And uh, I think I went down to get lunch and I came back and you were done. Yeah, you turn on the device, uh, you give it networking uh, since, so if you, if you turn this thing off, if you used a VMware ESXi server, for example, you plug in a monitor to it, you're not really seeing much, it's just that's the management uh, GUI right. IP address. Um, in that same vein, I mean, you set it up, you get the networking applied, and then you go through the, web, uh, the website, and uh, for this box, um, use uh, your API keys for the object uh, bucket, attach it in v uh, into Veeam, and you're off to the races. I mean, you really just point Veeam at the thing, create a backup job that dumps it at here. And you do want to make sure that if you're using a immutable bucket, um, you have your date set correctly. Well, well, I thought we were going to get into that a little later. Maybe we'll get into it now. So you said a bunch of things there that are important. You mentioned Veeam. So Utpi is designed for Veeam, which normally, you know, when we started this project, we've had this thing in our, in our lab for many months. We've been using it as our primary backup target, but um, Veeam used to mean mostly VMware, and that's yeah. not the case anymore. No, I mean, this it's just a target for uh, Veeam backup jobs, so you could be using uh, VMware, Hyper-V, whatever, and just dump your VMs or, or dump your backups on here. The one everyone's excited about now, Veeam's adding support for Proxmox, so that gives uh, another opportunity, mostly for SMBs, but uh, some other interesting use cases where the OOP can be a, a great target for a diverse set of hypervisors, but Veeam is, is part of that. Uh, the other thing we mentioned and you started to talk about was the S3 bit, the object native, and that's fundamental to a feature that came out in Veeam V12, which was direct to object backup. Yeah, and it's, it makes it, it makes it easy, but also really secure in terms of how to connect to the devices. So you have your target, you have your uh, key for uh, the particular um, object bucket, and the connectivity side, I mean, there's not a lot of setup, although there are some very important steps. From a testing side, um, I don't, you, you keep on saying we're going to get in, we may not get into it right away, but... We Kevin really wants to talk about this immutability yeah, we bit. we started to hammer the box, like, okay, let's get some faster and faster workloads on it, and then all of a sudden I'm realizing we're filling up the box, and I'm like, I'm, I go to the thing, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to, delete it and you, you can't, uh, you're just left with a... Kevin's use of the word we here is quite creative because I had nothing to do with it. I you was, told me to I was it eating go lunch. faster and faster. I was eating lunch and uh, basically what we're talking about is the fundamental definition of immutability. It means you cannot delete it while it's covered under that immutability flag or that policy. And so what we did was basically marked everything as immutable, every backup was immutable, and... Well, it was the, tar it was the bucket that was immutable, so we had everything going into fine. it. Fine, but everything was going into one bucket. And so that pretty quickly we could fill up the 64 or 128 terabyte capacity of one of these Utbees, which we did, and then what? Uh, we waited, I believe it was 28 days, uh, for the bucket to allow us to delete things from it. It was so, so we had two choices. We could have refoundationed the server, which or it, the or, refoundation part is not a supported thing. Yeah. It, it was, it was, not, it was kind of in the realm of almost easier to ship a new device to us at that point. It's not a like it's not a thing where I mean yes, you could technically go in here and start smashing hard drives if you had access to the platform, but yes, for ransomware going in your environment, 
you can't really do much to this box okay. yourself. So immutability is a real thing. Uh, and if you try to delete something out of an immutable flag bucket, you will not be able to. And, it, and if you've done it by accident, like, like my friend here did, you not we, not we, I had nothing. Remember, I was at lunch. There were a couple people involved. You may not have been involved, but there, it was more than just me. Yeah, there might have been some others. But be that as it may, you have to know what you're doing with this. And uh, I think that uh, Object First has built in some more flags and some more information there so that they warn customers, you know, if you're doing this, make sure you really understand what you're doing. Well, yeah, and you can set up buckets with or without that flag. So you don't have to have all of your have backups to be. Yeah. going into it. And so we ended up moving, after that instant, we moved more uh, of our uh, backup um, targets. Uh, we, we applied more jobs to the uh, non-immutable buckets. So we could have trial and error without just the, oh, we have to wait uh, stage. Yes, and so that immutability though really gets to a foundational part of what Object First has done with UPI, and it's a highly uh, concentrated effort on security and what they call ransomware proof storage. It's a big claim, make no mistake, it's a very big claim, but from everything we've seen so far with this, and we've had this box in here for, I mean, what, eight or nine months at this point, yeah the security and the ease of implementation of security is a big part of that. So we talked about 15 minute setup. That's the whole thing. That's with the zero trust data resilience um, concept built into it. And actually the uh, ZTDR is something that our good friend Rick Vanover is quite passionate about. Yeah. And so uh, I, I called up Rick because as much as we love security, Nobody loves security more than that guy, and he's going to tell us a little bit more about ZTDR and why that's so important to this setup. Hi, I'm Rick Vanover from Veeam. I love zero trust data resilience. Why? It has absolute separation between the backup storage and the backup software. What we do here at Veeam is really well suited for that because you have absolute portability of the backups on something like object storage on premises and object storage in the cloud. Let me show you what I'm talking about. What I'm looking at here is a simple environment where I have a on-premises set of data that I really care about. All the different protocols that you're using, we will have a backup software. I recommend Veeam to protect that and we'll keep it on S3 compatible storages, such as Object First with their smart object storage API support. Then you can put that backup data offsite onto a hyperscale public cloud or Wasabi with an additional copy of immutability. What I like here is by the numbers, the different layers of your production workspace, your backup software, your first copy of your backups and your second copy of your backups can all be ultra resilient. I like to call it the 32110 rule where you have three different copies of data, two different media, one of which is offsite one of which is also ultra resilient, such as immutable, but in that example, both were immutable. 32120, it's a great recipe for ultra resiliency. So highly recommend zero trust data resiliency. Thanks Rick, that was great. And as always, your 3210, 90210 policy makes a lot of sense. And uh, the, the ZTDR stuff is really strong and foundational to uh, what Object First is doing here and, and the Veeam integration, really, really important. Uh, I know we talked about GUI and I want to show some of that, but before we do, I mean, we're hardware nerds, so we should yeah. talk a little bit about the hardware. Currently, UTB comes in 64 terabyte and 128 terabyte capacities, and at Veeam On, they'll be announcing a new 192 terabyte capacity, along with a software update and a couple other enhancements. If we take a look at what we've got here, See if I can pull this off without knocking the drives. This is, you know, because we are operational, of course. This, uh, first of all, the bezel, every time we have this in the rack and we do social or a live or something, people are like, what is that giant orange thing? It's the orange brightest thing? thing in the middle of the rack. It is very bright, so uh, UPI customers will uh, definitely notice this when they go in their, their, their lab. But we've got a 2U, 12, uh, 3 and a half inch bay on the front. Yeah, and in that we have the mixture of hard drives and a NVMe cache drive. But so for, uh, for the uh, 64 terabyte capacity, it's uh, 11 8 terabyte hard drives, uh, 10 of which are used for the RAID 6 uh, group, and the uh, one, one is a hot spare. And then I believe it is the top guy right there that's a NVMe cache drive. 
And then for boot, it's on the back and there are uh, two uh, two and a half inch uh, SATA drives, 240 gig, I believe, uh, yep. that uh, keep the thing operational. Yeah, and Object First is making really no claims with the hardware. The hardware is kind of the hardware. And yeah, I think we need to open it up. You want to open it now? Yeah, why not? Well, because it's running? Okay, well. There you go, Kevin the Madman has done it again. Yeah, and oh, it's a pretty simple layout. It's a dual processor uh, system, uh, and uh, there is actually a lot of uh, network connectivity on here. So you have, uh, it, in this implementation, it's uh, 10 gig interfaces, and you have both the RG45 10 gig and SFP plus uh, 10 gig, depending on what your uh, environment uh, supports. And we're only using half of those, as you'll see when we go to the GUI. It's um, not always uh, excited to have us not using the ports on this thing. Yeah. So we've configured them all in the GUI, but uh, you certainly don't need to. Um, should you want to put the lid back on? You're making me nervous. I mean, it's it's fine. It should be good. <laughs> it's fine until someone drops a coffee in it. All good. All good. But we talked about software in the GUI is a big uh, piece of this, and we certainly don't want to skip past that. We're not going to do a super deep dive here, but just want to show you a couple fundamental things about uh, the OOPI interface that are important, including the live updates, of which there is one. So we can do that, too, as part of this process. But, uh, Kevin, when we're looking at this, uh, at this GUI, what stands out initially? Because backup is typically really complicated. This is super simple. Yeah, I mean, we've played around with different backup target uh, systems in the past. This one, you have your uh, capacity, your uh, total footprint, amount of capacity free. The uh, monitoring side, as you have backup jobs hit it, will start to uh, populate. Uh, in this case, it's a pretty, it's a pretty nice interface. So you get your uh, live status, uh, day, week, month uh, going out. Uh, depending on the size of your environment, you're going to see the uh, the different nodes. Right here, the warning is actually to let us know that a uh, software update is available. So. If you want to go into that stage, it's pretty easy as well to do that. Your S3 buckets, enabled version or unversioned is the uh, immutable or non-immutable. Mm -hmm. And that's, <laughs> sadly, our, uh, the one that we had with uh, version enabled. Once a file is put into it, you can no longer delete it. And there's like some little configuration files in there. That'll never go away. I mean, you, you pretty much have to destroy the platform just to get rid of it. 28 days later, you can uh, get rid of your, your problem. Yeah, so after you create a bucket, you can assign a, a key to it. In this case, if someone wants to break into our environment and uh, see our uh, access key, um, you can just pop in there and that's how you access it and that's your super secret access key. I don't really care if someone sees it because you'd have to have physical access in the environment. You're probably not gonna do that. And if you get into this, you're gonna have Unrestricted access to a few uh, low-gen VMs and some things that I probably don't care about if you see, but if you get in here and get access... Nothing terribly exciting. You've done something well, or not well. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a really simple platform. It's really easy to go through. And this is where, uh, so like on the update side... Right. Updates, you can check for updates. Obviously, there's one that's available. And uh, when you go through with it, um, it's doing updates to the uh, Object First software as well as underlying OS uh, software updates. And um, you'd want to do it in a window where you're not applying your uh, backup jobs, but um, it will just go through the uh, process and uh, it'll do a little breakdown of what, uh, what's going to be applied. Yeah, so this, this one's grabbing Ubuntu updates in addition to the uh, Ootby update. Yeah, so you can stage uh, certain things and some will require uh, reboots, others won't. Right. Um, but it takes you to that process, gives you some visibility, but also makes it really easy. I mean, click install updates and, I mean, it's not done instantly, but it takes you, you don't have, it's a hands-off approach. All right, send it. Let's do it while we're sitting here. I don't think we should make everybody wait and watch this whole process, but actually it's going out and it's grabbing its uh, packages and installing relatively quickly. But this gets to the fundamental benefits of this platform, as we've talked about several times already. Ease of use, well, ease of use, while still being super secure. Wait, that's easy the big and combo. Secure is a big combination because a lot of platforms, if they're incredibly secure, but it requires like a PhD to operate, those policies may not be implemented because it's so difficult. This one. Well, that's where they, that's where things break down, right? Yes. Yeah. So they get 
too Wait, tightened down, too cumbersome, and then people don't follow the process. Yeah, the two-week password renewal policies, which should uh, relate down to a post-it note see, on someone's body. We've seen that too, post-it yeah. note for security. Yeah. For small businesses that are adopting this with uh, Veeam as their application, it just works so well together. I suspect too that for service providers that are putting these out there in the field for their customers, this is uh, another nice solution that's fully featured and, as we said, so easy to manage and tightly integrated with Veeam with all the security embedded, that that's another nice play too for the channel and those uh, service providers. Yeah, definitely. So uh, we're still going here, we're at 80% with 35 seconds or so remaining on the update. And finished, it's probably complete. rebooting. Yeah, probably, well, I don't know, that was pretty quick. Did it reboot I at all? I heard some fans, um, so. <laughs> the update's finished while we're doing this, uh, this video shoot and it's up to 1549 now and no reboot required and it's up to date. So we shouldn't typically update it during business hours. That's not great policy, well, but we did. We probably want to do it because usually your backup windows are going to be outside of business hours. So you want to do your backup window updates during business hours? Probably. Yeah, probably not. But it worked really well. Anyway, point being, dead simple to use. We've got a full report we'll link to in the description. Uh, we'll link to the Object First site. If you want to learn more, fill out that contact form. They would love to tell you all about Ootby and uh, the integration again with Veeam. Simple, secure, object native, backup target storage. Fantastic thing, it's worth checking out. Thanks for tuning in.